I'd like everybody to think about their breakfast. What did you have for breakfast this morning? It could have been orange juice, bananas, cup of coffee. Did you know that plant diseases actually threaten your breakfast? I'm gonna spend a few minutes talking to you about the challenges of emerging plant diseases and how they impact food security and your breakfast. We're all living through a pandemic right now. COVID-19 outbreaks are global, but let me tell you, pandemics are not new. We've had pandemics globally for centuries and plant disease pandemics have been some of the greatest challenges that we've faced. In 1845, the Irish population was struck by a, a famine, a pathogen that emerged from the Americas, from South America, entered into Ireland. The uh, Irish people were dependent on potatoes. It was their major food crop. And when the pathogen killed the potato crop, people died. At the time, in 1845, we didn't understand that microbes could actually cause disease. Microbiology was not a field of science. The germ theory hadn't been done. We didn't understand that microbes were pathogens of plants. So what was the suspect here? The suspect was a minute plant pathogen. Phytophthora is the name of the pathogen. The Irish people were the victims of this outbreak. A million people died and another million immigrated. And in fact, if you go to the ports of Philadelphia or go to Harvard Square in Boston, you'll see a monument to the Irish famine, a large memorial. And it's that memorial that commemorates the people that died on coffin ships entering the United States, uh, overcrowded ships of immigrants trying to come to a country where they could start a new life. And in fact, today, about 40 million Americans claim Irish ancestry due to the potato famine. About 70% of the world's population depends on agriculture for their livelihoods. So plant disease outbreaks, when they occur, can impact food security and national security. We have uh, many smallholder farmers in Africa that grow crops, and these are their major sources of livelihood. So when a pandemic occurs, whether a plant disease pandemic or a pandemic like COVID-19, their livelihoods are impacted. If people's health is impacted, if human health is impacted, food production is impacted. And we've seen that recently with the COVID-19 outbreaks in the U.S. So you're familiar with the concept of spillover from the animal pathogen world. Well, this phenomena also occurs with plant diseases. Many plant diseases originate in wild host populations and then move into domesticated crops. That was the case with the potato famine pathogen. It most likely originated in wild solanum species in the Andean region. And then as domesticated potatoes were grown and shipped, the pathogen jumped into those domesticated potatoes. So let's get back to your breakfast. I mentioned plant diseases impact food security. They also impact your breakfast. There are a number of emerging pathogens that are causing havoc now in the United States. One crop, citrus, is um, being devastated right now in Florida, Arizona, and in California by a pathogen known as the citrus greening pathogen. It was introduced from China as vectored by an insect, and it's really reduced citrus production by 80 or 90 percent. Another really important plant disease is Panama disease of banana. There's a tropical race of this disease that has migrated from the Southeast Asia into Africa, the Middle East, and was recently discovered in Colombia. Most of our banana production comes from Central America, and if Panama disease enters into Costa Rica and Honduras, where most of the bananas that we eat are produced, we'll have a uh, loss of this favorite food crop for uh, breakfast. Another important disease, coffee rust, uh, was uh, really severe in the last four to five years in Central America. It's a leaf spot pathogen, defoliates the coffee plants, and about 400,000 smallholder coffee workers in Central America were impacted by coffee rust in uh, 2011 to 2013 because of this outbreak. Some associate the outbreak with climate change. The pathogen was present at higher altitudes where growers were not using fungicides. They didn't know how to deal with the disease and they wound up losing their crop due to lack of inputs like fungicides or resistant varieties. Late blight 
is the name of the disease that caused the Irish famine. And it's not just of historic significance. It's a widespread threat globally in the U.S. and in many developing countries. Smallholder farmers still depend on potatoes for their livelihoods in places like Central America and in Africa. And late blight is a continued threat to their food security. So what's the actual agent that causes the disease? It's a small, minute, fungus-like organism called Phytophthora infestans. And much like COVID-19, this fungus-like organism spreads through the air. It, it spreads aerially, produces these small spores. The spores land on a plant, and when the plant is um, susceptible to the pathogen, you get disease. And within a matter of days, the crop can die if we don't have fungicides or a resistant variety in place. So in 2011, there was a huge outbreak of late blight in the United States, and it was caused by the introduction of the pathogen on tomato transplants, many like you see in uh, big box stores. Growers, homeowners planted some of these tomatoes in their backyards, and the disease quickly moved from backyard tomatoes into grower fields, and we had a pandemic. And a team of us got together and decided to write a big proposal, a grant proposal, and started a disease surveillance system for late blight. We call it USA Blight. If you go to usablight.org, you can learn about the disease and learn about outbreaks that have occurred. This disease surveillance system is very similar to the surveillance system you see on the John Hopkins University website for COVID-19. Basically, we report outbreaks, we report the spatial location and the outbreaks, and then we uh, send alerts via text message to growers telling them the disease is in your area, you need to treat for the disease to mitigate its spread. So essentially, as a plant pathologist, what, what I'm trying to do is understand disease, look at the, uh, diagnose a disease, understand where it occurs spatially, send alerts to growers, and mitigate outbreaks to stop spread of pathogens. Similar to what we're trying to do right now with COVID-19, test for the virus, determine where it occurs, and then eventually treat if we ever have a vaccine developed for this virus. For late blight, fortunately, we do have treatment recommendations. We have fungicides, we have resistant varieties. If you're a small holder or a gardener, you can rogue out the disease plants to prevent spread since it does spread aerially. But having disease surveillance systems is really important to monitor outbreaks. And my lab's been very interested in monitoring disease outbreaks and studying the different strains that have emerged over the years. We've named lineages of the pathogen, we've sequenced the genomes, we've studied how they spread geographically within the United States and globally. Why is it important for us to know what strains occur? Well, just like bacteria that might have antibiotic resistance, we have fungicide resistance in Phytophthora. There's about 2,500 tons of fungicides applied to control late blight on potato, and in fact potatoes are sprayed more than any other food crop just to control late blight. So the pathogens become resistant to these fungicides. When we study the genetic types or strains of the pathogen, some are resistant to the fungicides that are sprayed, some are sensitive. So by understanding what genotype is there, we can make recommendations on what fungicides to use. So we've had global outbreaks of late blight. It continues to occur. But wouldn't it be great if we could prevent disease outbreaks before they occur by doing digital disease surveillance? Many times, after an outbreak has occurred, like COVID-19, everyone is scrambling and struggling to try and stop the outbreak, develop a new mitigation strategy. If we could do disease surveillance and identify pathogens and potential sources of outbreaks before the outbreak occurs, we could prevent epidemics from occurring in the first place. So another way to uh, monitor outbreaks before disease occurs is to use sensor technology. I lead a cluster at NC State on the Emerging Plant Disease and Global Food Security Cluster, and we hired a scientist, Dr. Chishan Wei, who's in chemical and biomolecular engineering. And with Dr. Wei, we have begun to develop sensor technology to detect Phytophthora and other plant pathogens. Essentially, the technology for these sensors are twofold. There's two ways we can detect diseases. We can detect by doing genetic analysis using actual DNA from a sample, much like what's being done right now with COVID-19, where you have a extract of DNA or RNA and then you run a diagnostic test. So we're using 
DNA-based methods, and then we're also using volatile profiling. And this volatile technology has been coined plant sniffer technology. When a plant becomes infected by a pathogen, it produces volatile compounds. Some of these are defense compounds that warn the plant that it's being infected, it emits these volatiles, and then those volatiles can be detected with sensors. We're, we're using the plant's immunity response and, and its volatile profiles to identify what particular pathogens are infecting the plant. And the volatile profiles change based on whether the pathogen is one fungus or another fungus. And we've learned to read the volatile profiles of the plant and identify the pathogen before symptoms occur. So say a late blight spore, a phytophthora lands on a plant, it starts infecting, the plant starts responding by producing volatiles. We can detect those volatiles two to three days before symptoms occur. And so by using the volatile profiling sensors, we're now able to detect before the epidemic so we can treat before it spreads. And that's the goal of doing disease diagnostics, whether it's for plant diseases, human diseases, animal diseases, if you can stop the outbreak before it spreads. So the volatile profiling technology is, is uh, very innovative. We have a new plant science project and we're planning on deploying these sensors in the field. In order to study plant disease outbreaks, it takes more than one scientist. It really takes a village. And in order to populate this village, I envisioned a cluster of faculty working on emerging disease threats and outbreaks. And a few years back, we got funding from the provost's office, and we hired a team of faculty that are working in the area of emerging plant disease and global food security. We have scientists working on tracking disease outbreaks using genetics and genomics and evolutionary biology tools. We've hired pathogen biologists, such as virologists, that study disease outbreaks. We've hired an engineer who works on developing sensor technology for detection. We've hired a landscape ecologist and a geospatial analytics expert that can study spread at the landscape level. It takes multidisciplinary teams of scientists to attack global problems like plant disease outbreaks or human pathogen outbreaks. And these clusters that NC State has on different, in different areas, including emerging plant diseases, has helped us to cross these bridges between scientific disciplines in order to manage plant diseases. If you're interested in doing research as an undergraduate here on the NC State campus, there are lots of opportunities in laboratories in the plant pathology program. My lab just recently hired two undergraduates in plant biology. And there are also opportunities in other departments, the undergraduate research office on campus and your individual college research offices have job postings for undergraduates that can assist graduate students, staff with science. And I encourage you, if you're interested in plant science in particular, to either contact me or contact the Undergraduate Research Office for further opportunities. So can we predict where the next plant disease outbreak will occur and where it's going to come from? Well, the answer to that is yes. We're starting to do uh, predictive analytics and develop decision support tools that can help us identify potential source countries for outbreaks and track spread. We know that with climate change, plant pathogens are on the move. Several papers have been published showing disease outbreaks occurring in more northern populations as climate warms. Pathogens are moving towards the poles. And these are not only plant disease pathogens, but human disease outbreaks are changing their distribution based on climate data. So using climate data, we can predict where outbreaks might occur. And then using trade data and understanding our trading partners, we can understand how pathogens might move from one country to another. So we've done DNA sequencing of the genome of this pathogen. In fact, 10 years ago, with two and a half million dollars, we sequenced the first genome of Phytophthora infestans up at, at MIT. 
And it was a big, big paper, big splash, a cover on Nature magazine, a big team of scientists. But now with sequencing technology, the prices come down. You can sequence a genome for hundreds of dollars instead of millions of dollars. So we've started asking some genomics type questions on outbreaks of Phytophthora. And we've gone all the way back to 1845 and the historical outbreaks of the pathogen. In 1845, when this disease occurred, scientists began collecting samples and preserving them in plant herbaria. Plant herbaria are essentially libraries of plant disease specimens. They're leaf specimens that are dried. They have lesions of the pathogen. And we've been asking a lot of big questions about historical outbreaks, like what lineage caused the Irish famine? Where did it come from? How did it spread? How is it different from modern day Phytophthora that circulates? Was it asexual or did it reproduce sexually? And was there one lineage or many lineages? We have over 1,200 samples of this pathogen that are present in mycological herbaria. We selected some of those samples from global outbreaks, and we began to sequence the genome. We've used next-gen sequencing of entire genomes using platforms called Illumina platforms. We've also done smaller sequencing of smaller bits of the genome, and then also used microsatellite markers, which are um, markers that just amplify small repeated regions of the genome. And using that data, we've been able to sequence a historic strain. We determined what the strain was and named it FAM-1, or the famine lineage. We determined that the same lineage occurred in the US and Europe. We determined its ancestry, uh, most likely from South America, from Peru and Colombia region. And then most recently, we've tracked its global spread. And over the 150 years after the famine outbreak, we found that the FAM1 lineage didn't just stay in the US and Ireland, it went global. It was a global pandemic. We found it on all six continents, and we even found the strain in more recent samples in the early 20th century up into 1987. So pathogens don't necessarily go away quickly. This famine example, we have 150 years after the first outbreaks, the strain was still circulating and virulent, causing disease on potatoes. Plant diseases don't carry passports. Many plant pathogens move with the trade of plants and plant products. and knowing and understanding who our global partners are, what products are coming from which countries, and what outbreak situations look like in other countries, we can predict if pathogens that are outside of our borders might enter our borders. And using geospatial analytics and big data analytics, we may be able to identify outbreak sources and prevent entry of pathogens using these technologies. So where is plant disease detection heading in the future? Where do we see ourselves in five years in terms of developing sensor technology for disease diagnostics? Well, you know right now with COVID-19, we're doing DNA-based technologies. We're doing extractions of DNA, and it takes hours to days to diagnose an outbreak. Well, our new technology that we're working on now involves sensors that can stay on the plant, wearable sensors, much like patches that you might see for diabetes um, or insulin delivery. We're developing these wearable patches that could go on plants. There'll be sensors for disease and uh, will allow us to determine where the pathogen is in the field so that we can begin spraying chemicals or treating other ways using cultural practices to reduce outbreaks. So the idea is you have an infection, you sense with a sensor, that information is then wirelessly sent to a cloud computing source. The cloud computing source then sends the information to a geospatial map. You get an outbreak map of where the pathogen is, and then an alert is sent to growers telling them it's time to treat the disease is in your area. When we think about virus outbreaks and COVID-19, we know that strain has already gone global. We don't know how long it's going to exist, but using DNA technology, sensor technology, modern diagnostics, we can track outbreaks, figure out where they come from, and hopefully contain them in the future. So in conclusion, crop diseases cause large losses in crop production, impact food security, and national security. 
And just like COVID-19, the late blight pathogens spread globally and caused global pandemics and survived for many years in, on all continents. So plant diseases cause threats to food security and national security, and they've also caused millions of people to migrate due to outbreaks and have caused loss in human life. And as a plant pathologist, we continue to study disease outbreaks and try and mitigate their consequences so food production can increase for global populations. <laughs>